The Rockbridge Weekly caught up with Daryl Nick to my left here. He's the chairman of the Buena Vista City School Board. He's been on the school board for six years and we lucked out and caught him for about 15 minutes <laughs> to have him talk about the school board's budget, which seems to be of interest in this really tight state and local budget year. Welcome, Daryl. Thank you. Good now, let me, read, let me read question one here. Okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you believe are the main challenges facing the uh, school board this year? Other than budget? No, how about, let's, let's <laughs> take, yeah, other, is, there, is there anything? Yeah. No. Tell us about your budgetary challenges. Um, well, you know, one of the biggest challenges we have right now is the fact that we don't have a budget. And our legislature just took a 90-day leave of absence, if you will, and we don't have a budget set that, you know, that's going to limit the council and what they can tell us. And so we're now working with imaginary numbers, if you will. So, Word is tonight that the governor allegedly will propose that all employees pay 5% of their salary uh, in terms of VRS contribution, but then they're going to ask, recommend that you give everyone a 5% raise. That's as of about 4.30 or 5 o'clock today. Ah, uh, good to know. Nothing like, you know, getting it out there. Um, again, I keep getting reminded it's, it's kind of like getting blood from a turnip. Where are we going to get it from? I don't know. City Council doesn't know. Um, these are great recommendations, and I'm not saying that these folks don't deserve a raise. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that VRS shouldn't be funded. But if we're already at a shortfall, which even if we get level funding based on last year's numbers, we're at a $190,000 shortfall, just straight up right now, if we don't get cut any more than that. So where would we get that money from? No, I was hoping maybe you could yeah. provide us. Uh, I, keep uh, asking, sales, uh, uh, I keep asking all these citizens when I see them at the grocery store here and there and the other, you know, do you have a money tree planted in the backyard? And so far, nobody's had one. Well, everyone knows that you've been really efficient and you have looked at your expenditures and you've called this or that. I think one of the most important aspects of expenditure that the Buena Vista public would like to know is, what does this mean if you do not get additional state or local funding what does that mean in terms of Buena Vista City Schools employment? What's, what does that do in terms of the employment picture? I think what we would have to do is the same thing that we've done over the last roughly four years that we've been facing this economic crisis, where when we have people retire, maybe we don't replace that job per se, we combine two jobs. Uh, we've gone to some part-time jobs that were full-time jobs. So there, there's things that we've done uh, in particular, not so much the school board, but our administration have been very creative in going around those things and being very efficient, even though we keep facing these economic downturns. And I think we would have to look at that again, you know, where can we not replace someone if they retire or leave and those types of things. And, and I, I don't want to say we'll do a huge drastic thing because we don't plan on doing that, but you never say never either. So. I guess everyone wants to know. It has... There was an initial report that maybe you would consider the closure of Enderley, but you say that's not necessarily on the table no. to save money. What we were given was when the council was going to have their retreat, Dr. Gates, our superintendent, was given a directive of these are some things that they would like to talk about. Okay. One of the, and it was how can we consolidate you know, resources, this, that, and the other, how many students do we have, you know, how many per school, and, and, and the guidelines were very much leading us towards can we go with three schools? So that's why we proposed what we did. Not that we want to endorse that, but those were the things they were asking. Could we, if we had to, close a school? So that was information for them. The board in no way, shape, fashion, or form proposed closing a school, and neither did Dr. Gates. Okay. Uh, well, on a more positive note, why don't you talk about a few of the achievements this past year? Let's do something that's a little positive. And, it's supposed and, to and there are negative. some. You know, even... even Sounds like there may be many. It, it, I, hopefully, I think people will be impressed with it. Um, you know, over the last four years, I can't say enough about our administration, our faculty, our staff, because they have been very tough times. And they have still just said, you know what, we're going to put the kids first. And the kids, to their credit, have come through as well. Um, first thing that I would talk about is in education somewhat, but if you think about, like, the high school, the sports programs, our football team made the playoffs for the first time in 11 years. Uh, the basketball team went to the state quarterfinals. Track team made the states. Uh, the wrestling team, we had a state champion and two others that medaled. So 
in that genre, we're doing very, very well. But in academics, we are too. One of the things that I think is really key and critical, and here it comes back to the budget again, but it's something else to brag on with our students. If you look at the AP classes, uh, we've got like 24 percent of our kids that are 10th to 12th graders participating in an AP class. That really is impressive. And we've got 17 uh, percent that are in dual enrollment. Well what this means for a parent is my child can go to high school and get college credits and so when they leave there they don't have to take as much when they go to college and as we all know with this economic crisis that is huge for a family. Well that's been, so. a, it's been a big push in the school system in the last couple of years. And is there a particular program that you think best highlights some of the achievements of, in the school system, either in the past year or the last two? I, I don't know that I would say there's any one particular because when you, you know, we talk about the high school with those types of things, but then when you go to the middle school, you've got things that are unique to the middle school, such as the recycling program that the kids themselves control 100%. And, and they understand now what limited resources are and how valuable our resources are and, and what we need to do to, to make sure that they're there for the next generation. Uh, we've got them participating in a, um, a knowledge master's program, which is kind of like a quiz game, and they'll compete against other schools. Another great thing with the eighth graders, we have eighth graders that can actually now take high school credits. So when they get to high school, they've already are above and beyond and can then start working towards those AP and dual enrollment classes. It's, uh, that's really cool. It, it, now, it is. Uh, coming up, I believe there will be a public hearing where yes. citizens have a right to come and question you yes. and listen to administrators. Has that date been set? March 15th. March 15th. At 6 p.m. At, uh, will that be at Perry McClure? That will be at Perry McClure Middle School. Middle School. And I, I think what we anticipate happening is Dr. Gates will kind of present some things that, you know, if we have to cut, these are possible areas we could look at. And then we will open it up to public comment because we had a request, you know, from folks that said it's kind of hard for us to make a public comment if we don't really know what direction we're going. So we're going to do that and, and hopefully that way that will give them some things to kind of mull over while we're going through it and, and then that way they will have more informed questions to ask. So. Well, we've been fortunate to grab a few minutes with the Buena Vista School Board Chairman, Daryl Nick, and we thank you very much for stopping in today. You're more than welcome.